In this video, we're gonna dive into HyperScript. Now, this is a scripting language for the front end, for the client side, and it was developed by the same guy who made HTMX Carson. And it uses a syntax and a style of programming that's very similar to pseudocode, very approachable, very readable, and actually very versatile for different use cases. In this video, we're gonna dive into a few simple use cases, and these are just gonna to be toy examples, but they will demonstrate how to use HyperScript and what kind of things you can achieve with the language. Now, as you see on the page here, HyperScript makes writing event handlers and highly responsive user interfaces easy with a clear DOM-oriented syntax and by transparently handling asynchronous behavior for you. Now, that's quite a fancy description, I think it's best demonstrated with some code. So in this video, we're gonna set up some examples. Let's get started. Now I have an extremely simple Django project and we've imported the script tag for HyperScript here on line nine, as well as Tailwind CSS for some styles on line 10. All you need to do is grab the script tag if you're doing some development work and you can get that from the documentation as you can see down here at the bottom, you simply copy that into your application. The documentation is at the top here, so I'm gonna click that and you can work through this documentation in order to dive in and learn a lot about HyperScript. Now, what we're gonna do in this video is work with a simple form and that form's gonna come from Flowbyte, which is a Tailwind components library and you can get that here and I'll link this in the description. The code for this very simple form here, you can find it down here and you can copy that into your application. Now in this Django app, we have a base template with a content block and an index.html file, which extends the base. We're gonna paste the code here and it's just a simple form and we're gonna give it an ID as well, which is gonna be important for later on in the video. And the ID we're gonna give it is just simply my form. And finally, we're gonna add a div that encloses all of this content with a margin 12 tag from Tailwind. And remember to close that div at the bottom. So once you've got that code in, we can then run Django's server and we can see what this form looks like on the page. And you can see here a very simple form, two fields and a submit button. Now let's imagine a scenario where this form is only visible if you click a button. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a button above this form. And again, we can use Flowbyte for that. So I'm gonna paste this link in here. Again, this will be in the description. And we'll just get this blue button, the first one in this list. And we're gonna paste that into our template above the form class. So it's gonna be here. If we save that and go back to our page, we see another button has appeared above the form. Now currently it says default, we're gonna change that with HyperScript later on. What we now need to do is use HyperScript to control or, or rather toggle whether or not this form is shown when we click the button. So what we're gonna do is we can go back to the HyperScript documentation. Now, the key thing to note is when you want to use HyperScript, as you can see in this line here, the first thing to notice, it's defined directly on the button and it uses the underscore attribute. So as you can see here, we have an underscore attribute, which is set equal to a statement here in HyperScript. So when you want to use HyperScript, you attach an underscore to the element and then you write the code you want to use. And this keeps the locality of behavior philosophy that is present in Alpine and HTMX as well as other libraries. The behavior that you want to use is defined directly on the element. So what we're gonna do is use this underscore attribute and we're gonna set it equal to a statement. So let's go back to our index.html file. And here to the button, we're gonna add the underscore attribute and we're gonna set that equal to a statement. Now we're gonna perform this action on a click event. So the first two words, on click, very simple there to define a click event. And what we want to do when the button's clicked is we want to toggle a class, a Tailwind class called hidden. So we say dot hidden. And we're toggling that class on an element. So it's gonna be an element with the ID of my form which remember we added to the form element earlier on. So let's read this statement again. When we click the button, we're gonna to toggle this hidden class on the element my form. So let's save this now and go back to the page. If we now click the button, we should see that the form is now toggled. The hidden class is added and removed depending on what the current state is. And that's all done through this very simple, very readable line of HyperScript. Now, if you want to know what the hidden class is in Tailwind, we can actually load that up here. There is a display section on the documentation. You can see that the hidden class, which is at the bottom, that basically sets display to none, and that'll hide the form when that's set, and it will show the form otherwise. And we're toggling whether or not this class exists using this line here. 
So that's very simple and it shows the form and hides the form. If we wanted to hide the form by default at the beginning, we simply attach a hidden class to the form, save that and we can go back to the page and it will be hidden by default and then we can toggle that as normal. So that's a very simple example where we use HyperScript to control and toggle whether or not items in the DOM are shown on the page. Now let's show something a little bit more complicated. To start with, I'm gonna change the text within this button and we're gonna say show. That's because at page load, this is not shown by default. We want to show it, so we're gonna change the text in this button here to say show. So let's do that just now. Instead of default, show. And we want to toggle the text in this button depending on whether or not the form is shown. So when it is shown, we want to say hide Otherwise, we want to say show. Now to do this, I want to reference a part of the documentation here. And it's this control flow section here, which I will link in the description. Now what this does is it uses if and else statements to conditionally perform actions. And we're gonna use this concept to conditionally change the text within the button. So let's jump back to the template. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna format all of this a little bit better so we can read this, because we're gonna split the hyperscript statement into multiple lines. So instead of ending the statement here, we can then use the then keyword to add more statements. So after we've toggled this hidden class from the form, what we're then gonna do is we're gonna use an if statement here. And we're gonna say if my inner HTML is equal to, and within the string we'll put hide here. So if the inner HTML is equal to hide when we click this button, we can then set the inner HTML equal to show. And this my statement is simply referring to the current element, in other words, the button. So when we say my inner HTML, what it's referring to is actually this here. It will either say show or hide. If it says hide, then we want to set it to show and we want to do the opposite as well. So to do that, we're gonna use a keyword called otherwise here. And this is also documented here in the control flow section if you scroll down to this part here. So let's get back to the template. If the inner HTML is equal to hide, we will set it to show. Otherwise, what we're gonna do is set my inner HTML to hide. And make sure you close off the string here. So we have a very simple bit of logic here, a bit of control flow logic. If the inner HTML is hide, we then set it to show. Otherwise, we're gonna set it back to hide. So let's save this and see if it works. Now to begin with, it's show. So when we click that, and you can see that nothing happens, and that's because I've made a mistake when writing this code here. So what we're gonna do first, we need to set this here equal to a double equals because we're actually checking a condition. We're not setting a value. So that's a very basic mistake from me. And the second one is to do with these equal signs here. Instead of equals, we should be writing the keyword to here. So I'm gonna do that here and here. And hopefully if we save this file with these changes, if we go back to our page, this should hopefully work when we refresh. So if we hit show, we now see that the text changes to hide and the form shows. And when we hit hide, it changes back to show. So that is now toggling the text based on this conditional statement here within the button. So you can see the power of HyperScript here. You can perform all sorts of actions, even conditional actions on the front end with this very expressive syntax. So to finish this video, above the button, I'm just gonna add a simple P tag here with the HyperScript rules content. And to demonstrate more of what HyperScript can do, we're gonna do something a little bit ridiculous with this P tag. And this is gonna demonstrate that HyperScript can work with your own CSS classes. Here we've used it with a Tailwind CSS class. What I'm gonna do is go to the base HTML template and we're gonna paste a style tag into the top here. And it's gonna contain a class called Silly which has these styles. First of all, it changes the color to green, it changes the font size to 50 pixels, and it will rotate the content by minus 45 degrees. And there's also a transition on all three of these styles here with a duration of three seconds. Now this is just for demo purposes, obviously you would want to define CSS in a proper file. What we're gonna do now is go back to the index.html file, and what we want to do is when we mouse over this text here, we want to toggle that class that we've just created. So again, we're gonna use the underscore to denote that we're using HyperScript. And here we're gonna define on mouse over that we want to toggle that silly class on me. And the me keyword here, that refers to the current element that you're defining this HyperScript on, so the p tag. So when we mouse over into this text, it's gonna to toggle the silly class. So let's save that and go back to our page. And we now see the text appears above the button. So if we mouse over that text, we see that these classes are being applied in an animation, a transition. 
it changes the color to green, it changes the font size to 50 pixels and it rotates the content by 45 degrees and when we mouse over the new location of this content it will send it back to the original styles. So you can use HyperScript in all sorts of different ways to apply these styles throughout your DOM. We could even apply this to the button if we go back to this statement here. Instead of applying it to the current element, we could specify again the ID of the button. So let's give the button an ID of my button and we'll add that below here. So give it an ID below. And when we save that file and go back to the page, when we scroll over this, you see that the button itself is actually changing and it becomes ridiculous. And we can add more classes to our base styles here. For example, we might want to make the padding 140 pixels. If we do that and refresh, we now see that the padding will change as well. So you can add any CSS classes or attributes that you want. And HyperScript will work on the client side to change IDs, manipulate the DOM and do anything you want. Here we're only scratching the surface. It's a very versatile thing to use and I'm excited to explore more of it. So thank you for watching. If you'd like more videos on HyperScript, please comment. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next video.